welcome to the first episode of Laughter Without Fears video series called Minivan Confessions. Today I'm going to talk about choosing kindness with our children even when we're angry. Um, I've talked to a lot of moms. I've been the mom who's had a really, really hard time keeping her cool and staying calm and collected and gentle with our children. I don't think it's the goal of any of us to be bullies, to have a power trip, to demean our children, to talk down to them, or to exert just this unnecessary power over them. But when we really lose our cool and lose our temper and scream at them, that's kind of what we're doing. And I don't like that I do that. And I know you don't, I don't think you like that you do that either. So I wanted to talk about um, the things that have helped me as I've tried to keep it calm and, and bring myself down and just some things that have helped me, some of my experience with it, and just provide you with some encouragement in that area. So, um, I know like we've all been there, we're trying to get out the door in the morning and you know, you, you get everyone almost ready except for the fact that, you know, one child can't find their shoe and this person absolutely thinks that their sweater is just, you know, too itchy or this person is in the car and buckled and then they, I have to go inside just for a minute, mom, because I forgot this book or this toy. I have to bring it with me. You know, you just like, it's so difficult to try to accomplish what is such an easy task without kids. And we forget sometimes that they're their kids and they, um, they don't make anything simple. Yeah. They make a lot of things pretty difficult, but we forget that and we lose our patience really quick. Cause I know I've been there and just some things that have helped me. One thing that helped me, I haven't set this back up yet since we moved, uh, well, almost eight months ago now, but at our old house, I had this visible reminder. So that's my first tip is having some sort of visible reminder I put mine on my fridge and mine was a Bible verse that really helped me to remember that I wanted to, to choose my words carefully. And that was Proverbs 31, 26. And it says, when she speaks, her words are wise and she gives instructions with kindness. I want to be that person. I'm not always that person, but that's what I want to be. And having some sort of visible reminder that I can look at and see in a very high traffic area, like on my fridge or um, on the doorway as you're walking out, or maybe somewhere in your car if you're driving a lot with your children, or maybe in lots of places. Maybe you could put it in several different spots, but just having something that helps you remember, oh yeah, I should probably tone it down. That might be a good thing. That that might help you. It doesn't have to be a Bible verse, but it might be. It might be a, a quote or a phrase or just one word uh, that helps you remember that you don't want to be a yeller and you want to speak gently. Uh, something else that has helped me is having an accountability plan. And with this, I mean having someone in your life who can, you can turn to or who can help you help hold you accountable if you are kind of flying off the handle and if you have an accountability person you have to try to commit to yourself not to be upset with them when they hold you accountable so this might be your spouse and that means if your spouse you know taps you on the shoulder and says honey you know you're kind of out there you can't give him a death look, like staring daggers into his eyes. I mean, you can, but we really shouldn't. That's not really how the plan works. Um, my accountability partners in this effort were my kids, actually. And that's a really a good, you know, starting point. It might be another mom. It might be, you know, your mom. It might be your spouse or significant other. Um, but it might be your kids. And so for me, what I did is I uh, took the verse um, James one nineteen which says, so my battery's almost dead, surprise, surprise, which says, my dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. 
it doesn't say don't be angry at all. Everyone gets angry. It's a natural emotion. It's part of the human experience to, ex to have anger. Um, Jesus got angry at times, but it's what you do with that anger and what you say when you're angry that can make it or break, you know, the situation. So it's okay to be angry. I think we need to remember that as moms. It's okay to be mad, but how we deal with the madness, how we deal with the anger is a really uh, just powerful thing that can be powerful in a destructive way or powerful in a really, you know, positive way. So, um, that verse, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to be angry. I helped my kids memorize it. We, we recited it at bedtime. We recited it at the dinner table. We learned it frontwards and backwards. And I told them if mommy was getting really upset and if I was maybe yelling a little bit too much or getting mad and it was just unwarranted, they could tell me, mommy, slow to be angry. And you better believe they did. Oh, they did so much. And a lot of times it would help me. And I would say, you're right. You're right. I'm just going to go in another room and cool off for a minute. Because you're right. I got angry too fast. And so I'd walk away. And then i come back a little calmer and, and cooler and ready to handle the situation. Now, there were some times when they said, Mommy, slow to be angry. And I might have said, well, it also says that you should obey your mother and your father. And I'm not seeing a lot of that happening right now, am I? Yeah. So I'm human. But when it worked, it worked great. And I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed uh, having an accountability plan and having my kids help keep me on track. Because I do want them to remember me as someone who uh, spoke gentleness and kindness into their life rather than always harping. So the third thing that helped me and that I really hope helps you is just to remember that if you do yell at your kids and you do have a bad day, a bad day doesn't make you a bad mom. You're an awesome mom. The fact that you worry about the fact that you're yelling at your kids it makes you just an awesome mom because you love them and you want what's best for them and you want to do right by them. So you are an amazing mom and don't get down on yourself because you yelled at a little human. It's hard. It's hard to keep your cool all the time. I hope these tips that I've that I've shared with you might help you, but it's still hard, you know, and, and sometimes it helps just to know that you're not the only one who's dealing with this. I've gotten in ruts before where I'm I I put the kids to bed and I feel like, wow, I I'm just horrible. I mean, I cannot believe I talked to them like that, or I cannot believe I said that. They're they're just gonna grow up and have to tell all this to their psychiatrist and oh my gosh, I just ruined them today. They don't think that. Um they they don't think that at all. They love me and, and they think I'm just the best mom ever, even on the days when I don't think I'm the best mom ever. So I just want to encourage you that you're amazing. You're doing a great job. Give yourself some grace. If you fly off the handle and you don't like what you've done, tell your kids, I'm sorry. I don't like that I said that and I don't want to act like that. And will you forgive me? It's really humbling. Believe me, it is very, very, very humbling to go to your toddler or your school age child and apologize. But you know what? We expect them to do that when they've wronged us or when they've wronged somebody else. So what a powerful model that is as a mom to go to them and say, I'm human, I screwed up, and I hope that you'll forgive me for what I've done because I love you and I do want to do right by you. So sometimes it's a little scary to say, I'm sorry. But it's really, um, it's just really a strong moment that can help build your relationship and help them to know that, Oh my gosh, I don't have to be perfect all the time because everyone makes mistakes. Even mom and dad make mistakes sometimes and they and they own up to that. And that's just a really important thing for the kids to realize. So, all right, I promised myself I wouldn't go over 10 minutes and my time clock is just ticking down. I am so, so excited that I've completed the first episode and that you've made it this far and watched it with me. And I just thank you so, so, so much for being a part of this. And I hope that I'll see you back here next time. I want you to know that you are doing important work. You are a great mom and I hope you are encouraged. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.